I'm going to talk today about two things. Uh, it's going to be natural enemies on, on, on plants in general, on weeds, for example. And uh, also the second part is going to deal with uh, uh, seed treatment. So how to control, how does it affect to, to, to control the plants. Uh, first of all, can you turn off the lights for a second only? So? so I want you to see this picture and then you are going to let me know uh, how many natural enemies you find there. So and uh, you all know what are natural enemies. Yes? Natural enemies are uh, insects. It can be even uh, fungi or bacteria that uh, attacks and affects some pests. So and in this case, we have several types of natural enemies here. And uh, in, this, in these two slides. But that's a case that it's uh, very different because this is a sugarcane aphid. And I was planning to take you to a patch of sugarcane aphid that I have here that has great numbers of aphids. So, and that's why we have these great numbers of natural enemies here. So, uh, so can you tell me how many do you have there? Or how many types do you see there? Maybe four, I'm not so, I don't remember one. Uh, but there are, uh, let me see. So uh, this is a larva of a, a, a sweat fly. So the flies that usually, or, or, or fly that's a pollinator fly. This is a fly that comes sometimes when you are in the, in the field and come close to your hand or to your arbor. So those are, fly, those are predators. And also you have here these ones. Eh? These ones probably are the uh, Asian ladybugs. So and these are the most common, probably that's why you say four. Okay, those are four of those ones. Uh, this is the pupa, you are going to see some of them. And this is the larva. And you can see also two of them, two or two or three actually, one, one is there. But besides that, not all the natural, not all the ladybugs have this coloration, the bright coloration. Some of them are very tiny even as large as the, as the head of a needle. And they're of different colors. They can be even black, brown, and so on. So what we have here, these white spots that you see there, those are some of the larvae of those uh, ladybugs. And these are ladybugs, for example, we have one, two, three, four, five, six there. So they were very abundant. Sometimes we don't realize that we have this in, the, in, the, in our fields and we try to kill them because they look a lot like a millibox. Have you know what's a millibox? So especially on ornamental plants, you have millibox. And these ones, they have this uh, white surface because this is a, a, a wax that they use to protect themselves. But they are very voracious. And uh, I have some... Uh, samples that are prepared there that you can see those ones. And um, also I have a, a, sl uh, a video that you can see there, but Ms. Uh, Yasiri went to bring that stuff. Also here we have another one. Oops. This is a <coughs> lace wing larva. So these are also very voracious. So have you seen the adult lace wing? Have you ever seen those ones? No? So. In this case, means the immature forms, the, uh, the larva, and even the matures, the ad adult ones, they prey on, 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 on aphids and all other insects. So I'm letting you know this because uh, this year we have a very interesting event in, in wheat. So there were a couple of fields that uh, have great numbers of, uh, of, of aphids. And, uh, uh, when I visit these fields, the, the, the farmer was really worried and uh, he was re ready to cut the, the, the field. But then I noticed that there were a lot of uh, fungi, fungi affecting these, these, these aphids. And the, the fungi, that's another type of natural enemy, basically in one week wipe out everything that was there. But not only that, after the, there were some aphids left over and then Another type of natural enemies, small parasitoids came and then finished with the, that work. So, and uh, so that's uh, that's why. Did the aphids spread any viruses? Well, aphids in general, yeah. Here in, in Kentucky, especially on, on wheat, we have the yellow dwarf, 
virus that is spread by, 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 by three different types of aphids here in, in Kentucky. There are probably four. Uh, there's one that's more important, more common, uh, but it means in general, all the aphids, most of the aphids spread viruses in different plants, even in tomatoes, some vegetables, or even corn, and so on. But if you're waiting for the natural predators to kill them off, yeah, are, are that's correct. The, the viruses? That's correct, but that means, uh, but it means not all the time we need to completely spray, and that's why this talk comes with the following. Uh, so in total here, there are 20 natural enemies and six different types of, of, of uh, types. So spray for aphids. So that's very important. So when do you spray for aphids? And this is, uh, uh, it depends uh, of the economics of the, of, the, of, the, of the crop. And that's very important for, for growers. But when you spray, it should depend on the monitoring. So you don't need to spray only for one purpose. And also it depends on the threshold. But this threshold should kind of change sometimes for the economic, uh, what's the economics of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the market. In addition to that, uh, we have also not a spray, but a treat seed treatment. And that's why seed treatment is used in a similar way as uh, uh, people use uh, for control pathogens for controlling fungi. And that's the only, or the only insecticide that entomologists use uh, uh, seed treatment as in a similar way that uh, plant specialists use. Because this is used as prevention, and that's why where your question is answered. So I'm not fully convinced yet that we need to do a seed treatment here, but I'm not a farmer. So because farmers are usually can deal with the problem later on, because especially we need to prevent the infection from aphids. And this is a study that I conducted here last year, and where we have a one plant, one group of plants that were seed treated, treated, and the other groups were not seed treated. So you can see that here, the red line, this is the plants that were red treated, uh, seed treated, and they have fewer aphids. But in general, last year, here in the station, we have fewer aphids. So we just get to 2.5 aphids per plant, so for per, uh, per 20 foot road, actually. For feet road, I think so, that's, yeah, for feet. So, so very few numbers. So in this case, it means uh, there is some aspect positives with a treated plants, but it means based on the threshold, that should need, not be really necessary, okay? So. Okay, and these are only uh, the seed treatments in general in different plants, not for wheat, but the, for other uh, crop systems are used for <coughs> especially to control wild worms. Uh, and these are, this is a wrong number, or grubs. And even uh, for uh, some of these insects like bean, leaf beetles, thrips, and so on. This is for soybeans. But those are the, the, why the, the seed treatments are used. And in wheat, we use that for controlling aphids most of the time. Now, also in addition to that, last year we have, uh, or this year we have problems with uh, snails, and I'm just putting this stuff here. And I would recommend it to you not to use any insecticides for controlling s snails. So you are trying to use, I heard that there's some people trying to use insecticides. What are you, they, you, they are, what are you doing is are you are trying to kill some of the ground beetles. So and ground beetles are very effective predators of snails. Okay? Now, uh, I presented this information uh, during the soybean uh, conference, but this is important. And that's why I, I have my doubts about uh, the seed treatment. So what happened is that the seed treatment really, really works for people that are in the south. For people that are in Georgia, Alabama, 
the southern part of Texas, and Louisiana. And this is a study where they show and they compare treated versus untreated plants. Okay, and this is in soybeans, but this is a similar, it can be done for, something similar can be done for wheat. And you can see here that in general for the yields, for all these states, there were higher yields on the treated seeds versus the untreated one. And in the return money, monetary return, it's something similar. But if you, if you notice something is if you go from south to the northern area, this is decreasing. So I mean, you can see the 5%, 4%, and in Tennessee, we have 0.3% only. And so that's something that it was observed for many people. Uh, and this is something that's de debated. In addition to that, in Kentucky, I believe we are in the kind of an intermediate place that we still can probably use seed treatment. I need to be, to conduct more tests about that. I cannot tell you, you don't do the, the seed treat, but that's something that we need to study further. So, okay. And this is something from the north. So, and in the north is the opposite. In the northern areas, this is a study from New York. And in New York, you can notice that this is the plant density. And this is the yields. And they have a, some no nicotinoid treatments. And there's different types, and two types of seeds, the Asgro and the Pioneer. And what they found is that although there is some, uh, uh, for example, plant density is higher on the neonicotinoids. However, there is no significant differences. There are no differences there. And the same is for the yields. In the yields, even are they're very similar. So we probably need to do more of those type of studies here in, in, in Kentucky and see what's the effect of that one. So but it means I'm, uh, I need to be fully convinced of that to recommend that you a seed treatment. So. So, I mean, there are different types of seed treatment. For, especially for, for wheat, we have poncho. Especially for, for, for insects. I'm not saying about, about uh, plant okay, pathogens. Okay, plant pathogens, no. I mean, this is only for insects. Okay. So, and then you, you, right now, you can, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, you can buy some seeds that are treated for both insects and plant pathogens. Can you buy what? Yeah. So, and that's, that's the, the deal. So, but, I don't know, we need, do you think we need to study that type of stuff? I mean, insecticide treatments alone? Because you can save some money if there's only uh, protection for, for diseases compared to the insects. Yeah, so. So, and then this is the slide, this is my, my last slide about uh, natural enemies that you can see if you really proper some noise. So this is the, some of the ladybugs that we saw in some of the fields, these are really tiny. So th these are ladybugs that are not, not all ladybugs are brown or orange or reddish. These are different types of ladybugs. And if you want, we can see those ones in, 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 in the microscope that I have there. And sometimes they're of this color, blackish, and uh, they're very tiny. So I was in a, in a conference in a, in a committee meeting with a grad student yesterday in Lexington. And he's doing his PhD in, in entomology. And he didn't know what was this, that we have this type of, uh, of ladybugs. So I'm, I'm, I was surprised for that. So I mean, but anyway. So, but this is the adult form. This is the larval types. You are going to see this in some of the samples that we have here. Now, this is the pollinating or surface flies, they are also called sweat flies. And people really are bothered by them, but these are really not, they do any bite, so that you don't need to kill them. So they are really good pollinators. And uh, we have uh, these ones also in a great numbers on fields. Uh, and this is only to show you that this is the pupa, and the pupa looks like a very small piece of dirt uh, it's a kind of a drop shape, uh, but you don't need to to destroy some of them. So, 
On the other hand, also we have lace wings. There are two types, uh, at least two types. One is a brown, and the other one is a green one. The brown lace wings usually lay the eggs on the surface of the leaf, whereas the green ones, they lay the eggs on the tip. So there is a very small hair, and there is a tip, the eggs on the tip. So they do that because they are cannibalistic. So they can go and feed the rest of the siblings. But something that's very interesting here is that you see this is the, the, that little fly. Do you notice that one? Do you see that little fly there? Do you see? So that little fly is a parasitoid. Even there is parasitoids not only for natural enemies, but there is parasitoids that parasite other natural enemies. This is a fly that is laying an egg on the egg of this, uh, of this uh, uh, serpent. Now, this is a serpent. Uh, uh, Larva, but there are other types of surfeit larvae also. There is one that carry trash. So after killing the prey, this surfeit uh, takes the whatever is left over and put in the back. So and that's what you see here. This is the, these are the legs, and these are the trash that is carrying. So why do you think they do that? Why are they carrying that trash? The city. To protect against other yeah, to protect against other predators. And again, here is this is the pupa. We are not going to see the pupa today, but it means the pupa is like a small piece of dent, rounded, uh, looks like an egg of a of a spider usually. Besides that, we have several other uh, natural enemies, and then uh, also parasitoids. A question, a question here is that uh, removing the neonicotinoids, these are the products that you use for seed treatment, uh, increase the natural enemies on the field. Uh, there are some studies that show that neonicotinoids some have effects on the natural enemies. But so far, they are probably the most effective insecticides, the most widely used insecticides that we have. So. I think in, in Europe, in, especially in Great Britain, uh, in England, they remove the neonicotinoids and they carry with, they have some issues now treating vegetables. So I think that's not a step that we need to do yet, but that's uh, something that, that it, it affects the, natural, the, the, the population of natural enemies.